Hello everyone, thanks for today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. So day 10 will take us to around the 11th of uh, January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECM ensembles. We're going to around a couple of weeks, have a look at CFSV2 at the end of video for the next four weeks. And yeah, it's going to be great. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Week over of forecast has been uh, released. Probably going to have our coldest opening week to January for 11 years since 2010. So have a look at week over forecast, see what's going on. Of course, we will touch on the same sort of time frame in uh, this video as well. So uh, yeah, have a look at the week over forecast if you'd like to do that. We may have snow watch for you later on this evening. Uh, no channel members live stream uh, this week. Still not feeling 100% after yesterday. So uh, channel members live stream is pushed back to next Saturday. Be 5 o'clock uh, next Saturday when we'll check in and uh, have a bit of a chat if you are a channel member. Right, so uh, let's have a look at the stratosphere first of all then. So the stratospheric warming continues to gather pace over the uh, Arctic. This is our temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA via the JMA. It's quite a modest warming still at Modo, the Arctic, but the black line is moving upwards. It is above the uh, long-term trend, uh, which is, of course, the grey line. Going a little bit low down to 30 HPA, again, just a little bit above average at uh, 30 HPA, closer to a troposphere, of course. This is the southern stratospheric, warming took, st southern stratospheric warming that took place over Siberia uh, yesterday and the day before uh, New Year's Eve. That's moving into the Arctic now, and so that's the reason we see that black we see that the black line uh, did tick up a little bit. These blue colours are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA in the uh, stratosphere. As we run through, it looks like we actually get a split there. Do we get a split? What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Is that a split of the polar vortex there uh, on Monday, 4th of January? That looks really... Pretty much like a split of the PV, uh, I think. Albeit, it only, it only lasts for like a few hours. Um, and then it begins to sort of reform again. But that does actually look like a split of the polar vortex, doesn't it? On uh, on Monday, 4th of January. Um, beyond that, we see the blue colour sort of uh, re-emerging. And uh, the polar vortex sort of reforms. But of course, it would have taken... A very, very big hit by that uh, point. And, um, you know, probably enough to send the zona wings into reverse. In the extended range with this GFS run, this is what happens. So eventually we just see those blue colours begin to fade, uh, kind of. And it just indicates that the polar vortex and its roots in the are likely to continue to be, uh, you know, continue to be weak and uh, and weaker than normal, really. So this is so different to last year. Of course, you have a polar vortex of doom and it just blasted away all winter and even well into the spring this year. It's very, very different. Uh, very different story um, indeed. Uh, right, so we continue to monitor the uh, stratospheric developments, of course. Right, so this is how the CT is currently looking. Look at this. Uh, cold on New Year's Day. The CT for uh, January, a uh, provisional just to yesterday, the first New Year's Day, standing at 0 0.5 degrees. That is 3 degrees below average. That is provisional for New Year's Day. That's probably our coldest New Year's Day since 2010. I would have thought we're going to have our coldest first week of January since 2010 as well. So, um, yeah, we are having a cold beginning to uh, 2021. We definitely are. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go with some bushy today. Uh, another suggested location for this part of the video. Red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for bushy. Um, so, we're cold on average at the moment, of course. Dates on the bottom of the chart. Certainly, the next 10 days going to be solidly colder than average temperatures below average up until like the 14th or so of January. Um, even then, generally still cold now. There is a little bit of a warming trend that's going on here around the middle part of January. But to be honest, it looks as though even like to the very end of the ensemble graph, which takes us to around the 18th or 19th of January, even then we really are struggling to go much above average. Um, certainly the next week to 10 days is solidly colder than average. 
as we get to the middle of January, there may be a warming train going on, but where it actually comes to all that much, I think remains to be seen. Precipitation wise, there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be precipitation. So it's gonna be relatively dry, of course, while it's cold, because um, cold air holds less moisture than than warm or mild air. So it's not gonna it's gonna be dry on average. Um but there will be precipitation around, of course, because it's cold, uh, some of the precipitation is likely to be wintry. Um, as it begins to go a bit minor, perhaps towards the middle of the month, then we start to see more definitive precipitation spikes, but that continues to be a very, very long way out into the future, of course, so it is unreliable. Cold and dry basically sums it up. Uh, temperature anomaly, but with some wintry potential. Temperature anomalies from the 2nd to the 10th of January 2021 come out colder than average for UK and for West Europe. This has been going on since Christmas Eve. It continues for the next week. The modern average temperature anomalies continue to be in the east and the southeast part of Europe, colder than average in the north and in the northwest. So Scandinavia is also getting colder now as well. Precipitation anomalies from the 2nd to the 10th of January are going to be drier than average. Um, so cold and dry sums it up. But some precipitation around at times, meaning that there is the chance of some snow at times. Doesn't take all that much snow to, to cause uh, havoc, of course. Um, temp uh, no, uh, latest wind flow map from earthnonschool.net looks like this. Um, northerly winds are with us uh, today. So the wind is in from the north, as it has been, I say, since Chris Eve. It remains cold, therefore. Our mild sort of Atlantic driven winds are being pushed off up here. That's where the mild air and the mild winds are going cold northerly winds running down the western side of Europe at the moment. This is how the UK Met is looking for Tuesday uh, there with high pressure over Scandinavia originally to the north of Scotland. Winds are in from the east. It's going to be cold for the opening part of next week. Into the second half of next week, the high pressure pulls out in towards the mid-Atlantic, becomes the mid-Atlantic region. Low pressure starts to move in from the north. We've got another, another one of these plunging lows. So that's where the low is on Thursday, sitting uh, just to the east of Iceland. By the time we get through to Friday, that low pressure is sitting right over top of the coach. That low is obviously plunged southwards along with the jet stream. Ridge is pushing back northwards again. And so we've got another cold uh, blast coming in from the north and the northeast. That could bring some snow with it through the second half of next week. More about that. Snow watch tonight, probably. GFS looks like, as far as we get to with the UK, Met. GFS looks like this. Winds are in from the east. A cold, quite strong easterly wind for uh, Tuesday. We go through to Wednesday, about high pressure pulls out in the middle of Atlantic. Winds turn into the north, so we pull down cold north winds through the second half of next week. If anything, it probably gets colder, and the risk of snow probably increases through the second half of uh, next week. Into next weekend, stays cold. Number low is diving southwards through the North Sea. This time, possibly bringing some snow to eastern parts of the country. It's that position of that low to be firmed up on, of course. Uh, day 10, which is the 12th of January, 12th of January is day 10, uh, we're bringing a slightly uh, milder sort of westerly flow, or trying to bring in a slightly milder uh, westerly flow. Um, but it's not long for the high pressure's bridging back in, so I don't think, certainly from the south and east anyway, I don't think the GFS 6Z really turns um, mild until very late on. Still looking anti-cyclonic there on the 14th of January, and about high pressure. And it's really not until the very, very end of the GFS run, I guess it's to the 18th of January, but we start to pull up some milder west or south westerly winds. That's a long way off, of course. Um, GM looks like this. So winds remain from the east on Monday. So cold, easy winds with risk of rain, sleet and snow in places. And it will feel raw under that easterly wind. Uh, Three to middle and second half next week. High pressure pulls out to the northwest. Low pressure pushes down from the north. That could bring uh, a risk of some snow to eastern uh, and northern parts of the country, perhaps in the second half week. Next weekend, another low pressure diving southwards. Um, this is one that low pressure dives uh, the GFS. GFS has the low pressure diving samples to our east, but GM uh, has that low pressure diving samples right over top of the country. Again, it could bring significant snow uh, as that low pressure sort of pushes southwards from Iceland. That could bring some very significant snow with it. Um, and then we move up towards day 10, and the low pressure sitting to our south and southeast. Winds are pulling in from an east to northeasterly direction. 
remains cold and wintry uh, right way up to day 10 with the GM, which is the 12th of January. Much colder and much more wintry than the GFS at that time frame. And then the ECM looks like this. Again, winds are coming in from an easterly direction on uh, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, second half next week, we bring low pressure in from the north. That might bring an increase in risk of some snow uh, with it. Into next weekend, high pressure sort of builds over the country, turns as dry. It will be cold about high pressure, of course, with widespread overnight frost. Perhaps just trying to turn a little bit less cold by the time we get through today, 10, which is the 12th of January. But only a very, very slight and subtle adjustment would, would allow winds to come in from the east and would keep us cold. Um, up to and even beyond day 10. This is the precipitation type forecast based on the ECM run from Tometcho.com. So we have got snow around today. There's been quite a bit of snow through northern England. That snow will probably move southwards into the Midlands through this afternoon and into uh, this evening as well. Uh, into tomorrow, more sort of, uh, more towards rain perhaps in the showers in the south and southeast. Early part of next week, wintry showers really in the east, and then the second half next week, bring that low pressure down from the north, that does bring a risk of some snow through parts of England and Wales, uh, with it stopped an issue, of course, and then through England and Wales. And then we head up towards day 10, and uh, we look like this. So it just goes a little bit less cold by day 10 on this particular ECM run. And we go more towards rain as we start to be winding from off the Atlantic. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 15th of... Uh, no, it doesn't get us to the 12th of January. 15 members of the ECM ensembles with the mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards green and the low pressure over to the east coast. They're going to be cold and wintry, of course. 10... With high pressure to the west, low pressure over to the east of the country. That looks like it could be quite cold and wintry as well. Um, eight, uh, including the operational run, has high pressure in the Atlantic, but a little bit to the southwest. Low pressure further away from us to the east could just allow some slightly less cold air in from off the Atlantic, perhaps. Um, so just a little bit less cold with the operational run compared to some of the options. Seven, with high pressure out to west and also to the northeast, sending a ridge through the country. Could be relatively dry, quite cold with that. Six, with high pressure in the North Atlantic going up towards Greenland. Low pressure to our south winds could be in from an easterly direction. And then five, with low pressure right over to the country combined with a mid-Atlantic ridge. Winds are likely coming in from a northerly direction. That could be cold and a wintry. Most of the options still seem to favour quite cold weather, I think, at day 10. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 17th of January. Have 15 members of the ECM ensemble still, with high pressure blocking to the north. Low pressure is to the south. Winds could be coming in from the east uh, with that. 14 with uh, high pressure to the northwest, but less intense. Lower pressure in off the Atlantic. That one's probably milder. That one's probably bringing some milder air in from the Atlantic. Uh, 11 with high pressure up towards Greenland and to our east as well. That's probably going to be anti-cyclonic. Maybe quite frosty. Uh, that sort of thing. And then uh, 11 with high pressure centred around Greenland. Low pressure to our south and east. That's going to be cold. Uh, potentially wintry with winds in from uh, the north east. So up to day 10, most of the options still, still favour cold weather. In two weeks' time, um, we may go milder. But it isn't guaranteed. I think that's the main takeaway from the model output today. Um, right, uh, same with V2 lastly, so these are 500 mm of our heights breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes us from New Year's Day to the 7th of January. Uh, so this week we'll have blocking high pressure to our north with low pressure to our south. Winds will be in from the east, it's going to be cold. Um, there is a chance of some wintry weather coming through at times. Uh, week 2 also looks cold, this is the 8th to 14th of January. Again, mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland. Low pressure to our south and east. Winds could well be coming in from an east or northeast direction. That could also be cold and wintry. Week 3 also looks cold. This will be the 15th to 21st of January. Mid-Atlantic ridge still extending up towards Greenland. Trough low pressure to our east northeast. Winds probably coming in a little bit more northwesterly, if anything, but I would think that's still probably another relatively cold week, really. Not until week four, but we get milder air in. This is the 22nd, 28th of January. Low pressure then uh, up to the north and west. High pressure to our south. And of course, winds are back in 
from a west or southwesterly direction. So it does get milder by week four, but before then it looks pretty cold, I have to say. Certainly the first half of January is going to be cold. I mean, average. The only question is how cold will it be? Uh, finally, if you've enjoyed this video, please can you click like. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Don't get to tell your friends about Gals World Beats as well. If everybody who subscribes brings a friend, we're going to get to our target of 10k subscribers that much quicker. Drop a comment and let, let us know what you thought about this video. And yeah, if you subscribe, you'll be able to see future weather content. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. That's it for uh, today's 10 to 14 day event. So it stays cold, basically. No change today. Uh, we're staying cold, and there will be wintry weather at times. Snow Watch could well be appearing uh, later on this evening. So uh, check in for that if you would like to. Um... But for this, oh, just say that tomorrow, no Gals Over Sunny Round. Gals Over Sunny Round will be back a week on Sunday. So tomorrow, because we did the New Year's Day roundup yesterday. So I think tomorrow we probably just do, um, you know, like like what we've done today, a 10 to 14 day, I think, just for one more week. And then Gals Over Sunny Roundup returns like uh, a week tomorrow. And then the Sunny Roundup will carry on right way through to, to the end of um, this coming summer. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video t uh, today, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, make sure you sub to the channel. Uh, that is it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you later on the Snow Watch. Bye for now.